there are a lot of things that you can do in ads that will work well that will harm your brand. And I think there are a lot of things that you can do in ads that brand people don't like that don't harm your ads. A lot of people are like, you can't use UGC. It's not on brand. Or like, I can't use a TikTok captions. It's not on brand. Like, unless you're a very high end brand, it's not really going to hurt you for most companies. Welcome to season two, episode three. Good news. Uh, Cody's back. His voice is back. His mic is back. Can you whisper sweet nothing? We're so trying. That Give us some feedback. You guys haven't been very nice. We tried our <laughs> best, but uh, I'm a little bit slow to come around, so we're working on it. Please give us feedback. I definitely haven't been ha- happy with the audio, but uh, let me know how this episode is. I think his mic is finally positioned well. Um, I think it's on. I actually think this is the first one I've actually plugged it in. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it, but um, this is so. This is going to be an interesting one because I was writing a newsletter about like post purchase upsells and all that, which is a, a separate conversation. We'll have it at a later time. But um, in doing that research, I tweeted like, "Hey, has anyone kind of looked into the history of this?" I'm recently obsessed with like how I w- did like the history of abandoned carts. Like, when did this become a thing? And then I did the history of you know, I was trying to write the history of post-purchase and essentially um, I tweeted about it and then Cody replied with some direct response folks and then other people were like, oh, these are the legends and I kind of started digging. Um, I uncovered some some interesting kind of factoids. You know, when you like hop on, you hop on a TV and you see the people selling like the best pan or like the air fryer and four payments and it's like, you know, that universe. Um so I'd like for I love that shit. What, I know, what prompted so you to be excited. curious about what prompted you to be curious about this stuff? So basically I'm obsessed with consumer behavior psychology and how that the Venn diagram of like what works and what makes people like your brand. Like I think I, I don't think there's a very large Venn diagram there. I think like just because something works and people spend money on it, it doesn't mean that they love you as a brand. Um and I was kind of interested in like psychology of selling versus the psychology of people loving your brand and is there is there a space like is there a space where we can jump around in middle of those two um Mm -hmm. and that's kind of what so what took me to post purchase is it's one of those hacks that work really well like people you know you'll purchase magic spoon great 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 example right you'll hop on their website you'll purchase four boxes of cereal 39 dollars you pull the trigger with your discount code and then it's like for the next four minutes, you can get a, you know, a bowl for only three ninety nine, right? And it's like 90% off or like there are so many brands that do this. Um, yeah. And we chatted briefly about this last week and I was like, okay, I'm curious as to like how this even started. Cody mentioned people like John Carlton, Rich Sheffrin, Mark Joyner, and I just went down a rabbit hole. Old school so direct curious. response. So what did, what did I know. you find? I- yeah. So I went onto these websites and right off the cuff, I was like, okay, this is like, it's giving Ty Lopez. It's giving like, you know, like it had all the words, right? Like the gurus and like, so, so oh, it's one of them, much, I don't, yeah, it's, right? it's direct response. I mean, and then it used to be a lot of like either info product stuff. So like eBooks and whatnot. And then, mm-hmm. you know, that's a ton of the, um, ClickBank stuff. I don't know if you listen to ClickBank at all yes. for this. So click and then bank, a lot of that funnels. became supplement offer. It either became supplement offers or it became, you know, supplement offers where you buy one and then they're like, we'll buy six more and we'll, we'll cut it 40% Upsells, off. The yeah. down sells, the and whole the stuff thing. Works. So, yeah. Though. And then also then it became like coaching stuff. So like if you look at like click funnels, Russell Brunson, like all their stuff, mm-hmm. if you look at every, everyone who pretty much is doing that type of funnel, there's always pretty much some type of, you know, here's a, a front end offer and then, oh, we're going to upsell you this. If you take it, we'll upsell you more. If you don't, we'll downsell you and all that kind of stuff. It, and it so works. That's what I learned. Yeah, that's what I learned. So so John Carlton. So you you hit his site and it's like attention this week only for free. John Carlton and blah 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 are, you know, how to create a simple, honest and crazy profitable ad in three easy steps. And then the call to action is heck yeah, sign me up. And then it's like <laughs> bold. Like it does not have to be hard or frustrating. Blah blah blah. And then it's like hundreds of happy clients and 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 then it goes to like best of all you go through this entire mini workshop at your pace not ours you can take a lesson each day or 
do it all in a few minutes, whatever works for you, click here to register. And then there's like a big warning si- signal, like a red warning signal that says important spaces in this simple writing system coaching program are very limited in caps. Please re- reserve your spot today to avoid missing out on this rare chance to learn from a highly successful professional for a step-by-step formula for writing ads that transforms lookers into buyers. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm conflicted because it's like so much fake urgency, fake scarcity, bold promises, but like it's just such good copy too. It's so it basically what I was what I was looking at is like I'm a very much like a skim reader. Like I read the beginning and the mm-hmm. end and try to guess what it said in the middle. And as somebody that does that, I hit a website from one of these folks, and I was like, "Wow, shit!" I just I think it was John Carlton, and I just read like. 600 words not a single photo just words mm-hmm. and i was like they know how to do it right so on on russell brunson's website it's like can i can i go go ahead yeah. and i want to read you my favorite headline ever okay so in russell brunson what his his funnel click funnel website it's like it's like and really so this is like the the with a funnel without a funnel without a funnel no customers no sales confusing buying process sadness with a funnel, stream of customers, simple buying process, sales galore, opposite of sadness. And it's like, <laughs> like this is written for like, I don't know who. And it's like cringe as hell, but it, it I mean, it definitely works. This is like the, the funnel guy, right? Yeah, yeah, it definitely does. It, it, it does. It's very manipulative. It's very persuasive, um, but it just, it, it works. Down to Chat is brought to you by Peel Insights. I'm a big retention guy. Cody knows that. Big growth guy. And just wanted to quickly talk about some of the ways that we use Peel on the LTV side. So, Cody, do you want to chat about cohorts? Yeah, I mean, LTV, even on a a non-retention side, is pretty much the foundation of everything we do. So we're always looking at lifetime value, which is kind of the, you know, the value that we get from either a customer or a cohort. And Peel has so many great ways to visualize it. But a cohort is essentially a fancy word for a group of customers. So most commonly, we look at um, you know cohorts by month. So all of the customers that we've acquired in any given month, and then how are they? How are we retaining them, and how is their value progressing over time? And the amazing thing with Peel is you can segment that by pretty much anything you'd want to. So Eli and I are, are looking at that all of the time in terms of you know different customer journeys, different products, different messages. So we can really understand what types of customers are you know the best for us to focus on both on an acquisition standpoint, as well as what are, what retention practices are actually working for us. Eli, uh, what, what are some of the kind of the ways that you use LTV and some things you, you like to look at yourself? Yeah. So some great examples, one that we shared last time about shade matching, but the other kind of super interesting one that I guess is both relevant on the growth side and on the retention side is we talk about mascara being a very high LTV purchase. Customers that hop in on a mascara end up spending almost double of what you know, some of the other products that people come in on. So both from a growth perspective, you know, Cody thinking about the ads, as well as me from a experience perspective as to like, what products should we be pushing to our customers? What products should we optimizing? Should we be optimizing for an email, SMS, et cetera? That's something we learned entirely from Peel. Yeah, there's, there's really so much. I mean, pretty much any, you know, decision that you're making, any, any marketing initiative, what, whether it comes down to understanding how is a TikTok versus Facebook customer, you know, what's the value that you get both of them? And do you have to set different CPA targets for them? Uh, I use it to kind of do forecasting for the, the coming year by kind of uh, predicting and forecasting, you know, revenue that we're going to get from repeat customers, which is, you know, the most stable kind of cohort that you can get. That's all done through Peel. It's, it's pretty much everything. So it's a, it's definitely a tool and, and some analysis that we wouldn't be able to run our business without. And some things that we'll talk about in future episodes, like how do you increase LTV? Uh, at the moment, we're covering kind of like how to check out LTV and how to see what cohorts are doing better than others, but obviously improving CX, loyalty programs, referrals, communications with customers, all that fun stuff we'll talk we'll talk about over the next couple episodes. But for now, if you'd like to check out PL, it's plinsights.com and tell them we sent you. Favorite heading. All right. This is a John Carlton one. This was like a like a direct mail like like sales letter uh, for like a golf like info product. Amazing secret discovered by one-legged golfer adds 50 yards to your drives, eliminates hooks and slices, and can slash up to 10 strokes from your game almost overnight. It's just like, it's so amazing. There's so much curiosity. Amazing secret discovered by one-legged golfer. You're like, what the fuck is this? So like, It's like the Taboola stuff on the bottom of this website, right? You wouldn't believe what this actor looks like. Yeah. Yeah. It's just done in like a really good, clever way. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, listen, they're a large brand. So, like, if we were even to, if we were to bring it a little bit uh, closer to our space and and talk mm-hmm. about you know uh, direct to consumer e commerce, um, there's a brand called Golden Hippo. It's it's mm-hmm. like a holding company of, of brands. Um, they they own and I, I don't think Clayton? that they raise any money. Um, Craig. Oh yeah, what's his name? Craig Clemens. Craig Clemens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he 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 owns that. I don't think that they've raised any money. Um, so some of their brands are Dr. Gundry. Um, mm-hmm. they, they've got a bunch of others. I, I don't remember all the names, but I think Gundry is like one of one of the big ones. Um, Beverly Hills MD is another one. So it's either supplements. Mm-hmm. They've got some skincare, and and they. Uh, I think they're probably all fifty to hundred million plus. I think some of them are are even bigger without raising money. You know, there's really no organic traffic. There's no social. It's it's all ads and funnels and. It's it's very much a lot of this stuff. They run like VSLs, so like video sales letters, so like twenty minute webinars to like to like quiz funnels, and then they they hit you hard with the upsell. So it works. I'm not saying it doesn't it doesn't work at all. It works super well, but I guess it's just kind of like, you know, at what cost and is that you know, a, is is it long term? Is it sustainable? Um, mm-hmm. But also, kind of just is that how you want to do things? So th- this is exactly where I wanted to take it, and I think that's the question is like. As you start thinking about the brands that are doing a zillion dollars a year, and it's like most of those my mom wouldn't recognize um, or like mm-hmm. a random stranger on the street wouldn't recognize. And I think that's the question is like, do you want to print money or um, do you want to have like a legendary kind of legacy brand? I think there mm-hmm. are brands that do both, but it's it's not going to be like the brands that are on QVC every week, every weekend and are on like Shop HQ doing like 20 minute segments to like this will go in the next 10 minutes. Like, I don't think those are the brands that stick around forever in terms of like, and I don't know, could you have your cake and eat it too? Like, is it possible to create a lifelong brand with like strong, makes you feel a certain kind of way. And they're also kind of like using all these tactics. So I think you can, I I think there's a few things. So if we're talking post-purchase upsells specifically, there are a few brands who I know that do it, um, who are a brand, I would say. So native deodorant, I know that they, yeah. I don't know if they I currently them do it. The I know they've, they've done it a ton in the past. I know Moise has talked about it. You know, they're a strong brand. You know, I will recommend native to people. I love native. Mm-hmm. I I know a lot of people that like native and use it, you know, even outside of the, the DTC space. And maybe they've purchased it retail and not online, but mm-hmm. I've never heard one person mention them and be like, they're so gimmicky. Like they don't like, they, they do this like, they, I haven't heard anybody complain about it. I think a brand is more of a is a collection of every touch point and experience that somebody ha- has had. And I think one post purchase offer is not the worst. I also Magic Spoon's another example that, that you mentioned. I know they do it. I mean, they're you know decently strong brand. And I you know we we, we know people that used to do CX there. And I have never I've asked, but you know I haven't heard that that there are angry customers because of that. So I think sometimes we we have to at least challenge assumptions and. Mm-hmm. A lot of things that we think are a bad experience, like are they really like? For example, we just added in checkout upsell stars. Uh, I I literally just did that over the weekend just to check it out, but I didn't want to for a while. Kind of like I don't want to be that brand. It's like upselling. I'm like, well, what the fuck is the difference between having it on your PDP and having it in your cart mm-hmm. or, or your checkout? Like, I think yeah. post purchase is different, but I think like pre purchase, like what's the difference? It's it's kind of arbitrary, and everyone's got them in all the other places now. So I think, so this is literally what I wrote on my draft um, of the newsletter is like, as an example, I wrote an example of a brand that does this well as native. They upsell a travel sized item of a product that a customer just ordered. And that's super sensible, right? It's like, they highlight the use case as like add a travel sized toothpaste, like travel with you. Um, they instill social proof by saying like X amount of customers have, have added this or what have you. And then they keep it really simple. They do have like it's a one-time offer. Like there is a tiny bit of the, of the, you know, of the urgency there, but I think it's just like, they, they, it's thoughtful. It's not like, Oh, you have no use for this, but like everyone bought it to buy it now. It's like 5,000 people have purchased this within the last week. Um, and it's add to order, no thanks. And then that's it. Right. It's not this like never ending thread of upsells and downsells that are taking you through a pathway to hell. Sure. Um, Sure. I think you could do it. I think you could do it and do it really thoughtful, like Magic Spoon. You know, maybe there are a couple of extra kind of bells and whistles and like maybe a little extra urgency there. But I think there is, it's kind of the same idea, right? You're buying cereal and you have this like, their brand is so cute and funny and fun. And now you have a bowl and a spoon mm-hmm. that kind of is, yeah. is on brand and feels fun. And it's, it's, well, it's and also I also like kind the of like that. 
I totally agree with that. And I kind of like the, the one that I like, the thing I like about both the, them is they're upselling you exclusive products mm-hmm. that you can't get pre-purchased. Native deodorant yeah. is, is a mini. This is a bowl that I think now you can get a pre-purchase, but you used to not be able to. And at least there's still some, it might be slightly gimmicky, but there's still honesty there. What I don't yeah. like is get it in the nine, the, the next nine minutes and, and you say 50%. It's like, that feels very manipulative to me. And I know what we always go back to is like, how would you treat somebody in a store? And that's how I always like to think about it. And, you know, in it's totally fine to recommend other things pre-purchase, especially if you do it in an educational way. It's, hey, this, you might also love this. Like people also like this, but I don't really love, I, w- I wouldn't personally, after somebody's about to run out of the store, we already swipe their card being like, oh, you can actually have this right now if you uh Decide right now, yeah. I'll give it to you half off. Like, that's a little sleazy to me. And you can definitely get the average order value up. I just, if that was an in store experience, I would worry that that customer probably wouldn't come back. They might swipe their card because they didn't, you know, they, it was a good deal. But I don't know if they would leave and go tell their friends, hey, you wouldn't believe this the was a great I got experience. On my way out. <laughs> Instead, they, they would probably be like, you wouldn't believe what happened. Like, this was kind of weird. They, they probably would say nothing, but I don't. Th- yeah. I don't think it helps. I don't know. The other and and this is a again perfect segue to talk about like increasing AOV, which we'll get to in a second. But the other question I have for you is like, do you know the um, mystery boxes, surprise boxes, fifty yeah, percent off? Yeah, yeah. You have no idea what you get. What What are your thoughts on those? What are yours? Um. I don't know. It's like one of those things that challenges me because it's like, I can't imagine that ever happening in real life. Like I can't ever imagine yeah. being like, Oh, this, yeah, this is a mystery yeah. box. Like it, that just feels like out of Willy Wonka or like Mr. Beast videos. And it's like funny that, that it works well. Like I know brands that do it and, it and works crush so well. it. And it's so interesting that there, there is a lot, right? So like I used to be very, very hard on the direct response side. I thought people and brand like, we're worried about things that they should never be worried about. And and then now I think there's a lot of direct response stuff that, that harms brand. And I think the answer is probably somewhere in the middle. I think mm-hmm. there are a lot of, um, like even today, I don't know why I'm on Twitter debating uh, this, this, this <laughs> stuff, but you know, there, there are a lot of things that you can do in ads that will work well, that will harm your brand. And I think there are a lot of things that you can do in ads that brand people don't like that don't harm your ads. You know what I mean? Like UGC, a lot of people are like, you can't use UGC. It's not on brand. Or like, I can't use the TikTok captions. It's not on brand. Like very, in, unless you're a very high end brand, it's not really going to hurt you for, for most companies. You know, if you're very high end, yeah, sure. But taking a little bit too far, if you're again, being a little sleazy, being a little cheesy, being a little manipulative in your ads, that can hurt brands. So I think there, there's some type of fine line there. And I think it probably applies with this kind of stuff as well. Meaning like it could be a good experience. I mean, I think it depends if you're on brand. Like I would not mind a mystery box from Magic Spoon. I wouldn't mind a mystery box from Last Crumb. Like it, it kind of feels on brand for them. Hmm. I think the other thing that we kind of always get back to um, is delineating what like on brand means like i think to some people it's like tiktok you know when i putting the captions on tiktok feels like off brand because it doesn't match our like typography versus like yeah. on brand because we're you know we're, we're gucci and we shouldn't be doing that because it feels weird yeah. right so i think it's like is it off brand because it makes you feel uneasy because you haven't seen that style before or is it off brand because it feels cheap and tacky and i think it's always important to delineate that i think it's I think it's a struggle for for most small D to C brands as they get into like, okay, I've raised ten million dollars, probably will have to keep that working for me for the next year or two. My CAC is hard to get down. How do I increase AOV? And it's like you kind of got to sell out at some point, right? Like, are you willing mm-hmm. to squeeze more money with post purchase? Are you willing to squeeze more money with some some shipping insurance? Are you willing to squeeze some money with like a God knows what? Like, there's so many tactics. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think most totally brands end up having depends, to make that yeah. decision. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I, I think it totally depends. Um, for example, pretty much all day, all, you know, I had a few mentor pass calls today. I try to like block them. And the main thing that keeps coming up is people are like, Hey, 
Facebook is going okay. I really just need more traffic. And I'm like, well, the best way to get more traffic, like your CPA is going to go up. Like we're going to do all these things to try to decrease your, your CPA. You know, we're, mm-hmm. I think you can test landing pages. I think, you know, I, I, there are some ad account setup things that I recommend. You know, you're not testing nearly enough creative, but the most important thing that's going to be the unlock is going to be increasing AOV. Yeah. yeah. And if this is a, it really depends. Are you like for us, for example, we're trying to build a legacy business and a, and a brand that's going to have staying power and be around forever. And I think when you do that, you have to be willing to sacrifice short term goals for long term output. I don't remember if I said it you know, on here before or not. It's kind of like if, you, if you're investing in real estate, you have people investing for cash flow and equity. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have cash flow, you can't think about equity. You'll just be insolvent before you can do that. So you have to have cash flow, which is what pays the bills right now. But it's re- it's not impossible, but it's it's more difficult to get wealthy with just cash flow. You need that equity. You need that compounding interest over time. And I think that's brand versus performance. And I think it's, you know, we can sit up here, virtue signal on our high horse. Yeah. Like, you can't do this stuff. Like, you got to treat customers with respect. But, like, you know, if you get your average order value up, like, by $5 and that helps you actually be profitable, like, or helps you scale and helps you, like, keep that business alive and pay your employees, like, that's that's a net positive. So like I'm totally not against any of this. I really think it just depends for the right business. And for probably most people listening, there's probably some in between where you don't you have to be authentic with it. You can't do that. But, you know, upselling uh, thoughtfully to get the average order value up is probably going to have like a, a good impact on your business. As you're saying all this, I'm like, fuck it. I'm adding shipping insurance. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> are we doing our, our own or are we going with route? We're doing our own, and we're That's we're kind good, of just yeah. charging six bucks. And if you don't six if you bucks. don't sign it, it's like it's gonna be like the the warning signal that they had on on those websites is like in all caps, like by unclicking no, I this love link. My package is getting <laughs> stolen. I understand my grandma might not get her birthday present in time. I understand the risks, and I'm totally fine with it. Um, <laughs> let's let's talk about. Um, yeah, I guess you know after after the spiel, let's talk about like so. What are some what are some thoughtful ways of increasing AOV without kind of charging people shipping insurance? Yeah, right. <laughs> you're just that that's your number one goal in life right now. It's just how yeah. can I get everyone to stop offering shipping insurance? I haven't tested properly enough to you know understand you know incremental impact of each of them, uh, mm-hmm. and I don't think most people are doing it that strategically they're kind of adding things without like really properly split testing them. So if anyone has like hard numbers on like, Oh, this increases by this much, you know, but I think there's a lot of stuff that's just, it's, it's very unlikely to hurt and it's kind of table stakes. So, you know, uh, number one is, you know, very bottom of your PDP, you know, frequently bought together. You might also like can't hurt, right. Just absolutely cannot hurt. Um, we'll just kind of start on the PDP. Um, if it makes sense for you, you can offer multiple quantities. For example, and this is kind of some, some other stuff I've been you know helping on mentor pass calls with. If you sell a lower dollar amount item, especially if it's a consumable, let's say you sell bread or bagels mm-hmm. or cereal, um, you're not going to want to offer a nine dollar thing. You know, your Olipop doesn't sell individual sodas. You're going to want to sell a case of that Magic Spoon. I think you can get four boxes of cereal at the minimum. So that's that's another thing. Again, it's probably going to increase your CAC but your AOV is probably going to increase more. Um, so you have that. The other thing I, I love, and I've, uh, I love this on, on landing pages, but we'll start PDP is offering multiple quantities. So kind of where you have like, like, you know, Mojo, those soft shoes that are really good. Mm-hmm. They yeah, do a good job of this. They have four options on their PDPs. So I think you can get one pack. You can get maybe a smaller pack. You can get three packs or six packs. Mm-hmm. And a lot of this, again, comes from like direct response, but I, I don't think that this is ne- a negative thing at all. Um, I, I don't love it with four, but I love it with three. Usually people are most commonly going to take the one that is in the middle. So your middle, most right. expensive one is, is a decoy. Um, so ho- you hope people take that, but that's going to just try to make everything look a little bit cheaper. Um, so I love that. You can also play around again. This This is stuff you should test. You can default to it. So you shouldn't, you know, like what's automatically on, you should probably default to the middle one. It shouldn't be on the first one. You can see some nice lift there. Um, the other, Nugs, the only other thing. You, when I was at Nugs, yeah. Cody, they had one pound, two pounds, or four hundred and twenty pounds. That's so funny. 
just very on brand. But very two, brand. it was like one pound was like, I don't remember if it was like twenty five dollars, and two pounds was thirty five. Ninety percent okay. of orders were two pounds. Yeah, that that was the middle one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, and definitely playing around with it. I mean, I when I had a service based business, did that uh, and and would kind of you know play around with it. And I remember we we were we had like ten packs of sessions. We had 14 packs and 20 packs. Hmm. And we're like, what if we just offered 14, 20, 26? Like we, so we went from selling 14 on most commonly, or maybe I forget the exact number. So let's say we were selling yeah, 14 most commonly because that was the middle. And we made that the cheapest. Hmm. We started selling 20 packs way more often. Like without really changing anything, conversion rate really didn't take a hit at all. It actually didn't. And so stuff so like that, I would play around with. There is actually huge unlocks that you can get just by doing that you would be surprised if you test that properly and play around with, with not you know not your pricing but the sizes of of the offers of the you know bundles or whatever you're doing um people will take a lot more than you'd expect i guess that brings us to bundles yeah so you can do another thing like i think glossier does this um if we're if we're going pdp specifically um mm-hmm. let's say you sell uh, a skincare and that is available in a set you can kind of have it on there where it's like you're looking at it and then a little bit below it, it's like, oh, like bundle this with this and save 10%. You got to be careful. I think the, the one important thing is when we're talking about improving average order value, really what we're trying to do is improve, uh, you know, contribution margin per order. And you got to make sure that if you're trying to improve average order value by bundling and discounting, that you're not decreasing margin or discounting more than you're increasing AOV. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It makes total sense. Um, but, but definitely that. And then again, if if we're going to go off of PDP, um, definitely, uh, bundling, doing kits, sets, bundles, whatever you want to call them, uh, where people can shop and buy multiple stuff together. Um, pretty much every, every brand should have some, some type of that, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we have always, when I say we, I mean, Jones, um, has, has had it for the longest time, but it's always been super interesting for me to look at peel data and be like okay people that order mascara have significantly higher ltv can we add mascara to more bundles Mm -hmm. um and even if it's like a limited edition you know build your own it's always interesting to kind of peer together things that we know are fantastic for aov as you know products alone um but also ltv so i think like it's super important to jump into the data you know and figure out what would be good complementing complementary products to add together um for us it's like maybe it's the product that people have like mascara you know like nobody ever complains about that so like maybe throw that in bundle so Mm -hmm. even if people have trouble with one product they have one that's just absolutely kick-ass um so i think bundles are obviously great for aov but also can be a really strategic way to increase ltv um and just increase customer happiness by making sure at least they like two of the three products in there, right? If they buy one and they hate it, you're, you're shit out of luck. If they buy three and they like one. And that's what I've seen 100%. If we look at our, our data, um, pretty much any kit or set, uh, LTV is higher. That's 100% my, my theory is you buy one product, you, you either like it or you don't. You buy four. Maybe you don't like product A, but you like product B. So absolutely agree with that. Yeah, so we, we do it where you can kind of uh, pick your own shades it doesn't actually fulfill as a set, you know, for us or a bundle for us, but it kind of looks like it. And then there's a, a script that applies a discount. Um, you can also do things where you, but so those, the, the products are pre-filled, pre-set, you just pick your shade. You, we also do things where it comes in a bag and it's pre-kitted, but you don't get to select your shade. And then a lot of other brands, I think Huron has it, I think Magic Spoon does, where you can actually build your own bundle. Again, it still is probably fulfilled just as individual items with the, with the discount applied, but where you can actually add different products together. Yeah. And then I love the, I mean, Huron does this, Obvi does this, like a lot of brands are doing like spend X, unlock Y. And I think if done well, it doesn't have to feel super, super sketch. Mm-hmm. It can feel really yeah. like you know, Huron had like, if you spend, I think it was like 50, 60, you get a deodorant. If you spend a hundred, you get the, the dop kit or whatever. And I think if, you know, Avi has like the spend X, get a frother or spend Y, get a shaker. Mm-hmm. And I think it's like, if done thoughtfully, like, I, I don't think people are like buying an extra seven products to get a free deodorant mm-hmm. that costs 12. But if they're anyway looking, yeah, they might get one. Um, and I, yeah, I know from Huron, from the people there, that it, it increased, uh, it increased AOV pretty, 
right off the bat. Um, but I think that's also a kind of no brainer. Um, I guess that's all like PDP as well as like, you know, in heading into checkout and then, or heading into cart. And I guess mm-hmm. like we covered this earlier, but in cart, um, people that purchase this fr- frequently get that or add this for an extra, like for us, it's a lot of like, if you're buying a face pencil, chances are you're going to want the sharpener. If you're buying the, you know, like it, it when on our website, is it all custom? Like if it, is it all custom, like mapped out if they have this at that? So it actually wasn't. So we, we use, don't usually use apps that much. So actually a lot of ours is, is done custom. The only pro the biggest problem with that, a, there's limitations with being able to do that, but you don't get any data on that. Like mm-hmm. there's no, you know, like apps that those data. So we just started using rebuy. Uh, which which is excellent. Magic Spoon uses a, a p- bunch of brands. We use it, it at Olipop, yeah. Current, yeah, yeah, Olipop uses it. So currently we're using it just for in-checkout upsells, so we just added in-checkout. I think I'm going to use it for in-card upsells as well. The only negative is the pricing with most of these apps. The more you use it, the more success with you have with Rebuy it. Rebuy is expensive in general, right? It, it, it gets expensive. So I think what we'll probably do is use it just test some of this stuff pretty quickly. Like right now, currently we can't do in checkout upsells without, you know, kind of some workarounds uh, until some of the Shopify like checkout extensions go to all Shopify stores, Shopify plus plus stores. Um, But I also just wanted to do it super quickly and just see any kind of lift. I think we're getting, you know, like a 1% lift over what we were seeing, which is, you know, that's an extra almost dollar per, per order. Like I'll take that. Um, It's only been a couple of days, right? Yeah, yeah, I just did on Saturday. But uh, so we'll, we'll probably use it to set up our, our in cart upsells. We use sliding cart, I think. You know, it seems like sliding carts are super popular, but um, that'll allow us to do it. They have a, an AI thing. I don't really know a ton about it, um, but I'm looking at the data. Um, I think for us, what's interesting is like what we've done in the past with our upsells is like our in checkout upsells, stuff like that. We have, we've picked products where people don't have to pick their shape because we want it just to be one click. Um, mm-hmm. but now I'm playing around with stuff that doesn't have to be, and people have to pick their shade. So it's, it'll be two clicks. They have to click, you know, on shade, hit shade, then they have to pick it. Um, so we'll see how that, uh, how that works, but it's actually more people are taking stuff like in the checkout, uh, face pencils are a pretty big one. Hmm. Um, those are, those are doing pretty well. Uh, mascara is doing pretty well. I don't know enough about Rebuy to see if we can see based on what's in their cart previously. Hmm. Um, but I think it'll probably be some combination of, using the the ai but you can override it a little bit for example i want mascara to be up you know upsold to as many people as we can a we know margins on it they're good but as you always talk about ltv is really good um you know you also probably want to do it by shipping cost because if you're thinking about margin you know per order i want to add something lighter when they're already buying it's not going to add really cost me any extra or us any extra to add you know the face pencil to it but it, it is kind of if we add wtf to it like that might take it up to the next you know spend them out it's so interesting to me that people are choosing a face pencil and check out because it's like assuming that people already did the research to know their shade and they just weren't ready to pull the trigger but once they decided they're ready to fuck around and make a purchase they're like oh uh maybe i just grab this i mean mascara is a no-brainer i think yeah what you mentioned uh a couple of reasons why we love mascara but also it's like our lowest returned product it's just like all around hits hits every angle mm-hmm yeah, so yeah, I mean, we're we're increasing AOV by about a dollar per order, which again, like, that's not bad. The sharpener, but again, that's I mean, how much does our sharpener cost? That so that's our number one right now, actually. What what is it? Eight dollars? Yeah, yeah, something like that. So again, like, I might override that because it's gonna have a high take rate, but we're not. Um, next up, and and this is by by skew, meaning it's by not product, but by shade. The face pencil in in shade number one, so our lightest shade is high. Mascara is number three. Miracle wow. Balm All Natural is number four. And then what the foundation in different shades is the next four. Wow. It's so, it's so fascinating what to me. The foundation. Yeah. And that's a $44 item. Right? It's expensive. It's not what you think is an yeah. add-on. It's fascinating. I think it's, it's uh, well, talking about testies, we, we didn't come mm-hmm. in here with a testie, but we didn't come here with a, with a full test. This is a test, big one. But I think this is it. This is huge. I, mm-hmm. you, t- you texted me the other day or Slack me. You're like, hey, did you see our new in-card upsells? And I was like, I had no understanding that you actually like got rebuy, set it up and launched it in the last five days, um, which is so cool. And I think this is a real fun test. Like how much can we increase our, our AOV? Um, I think according to the guy on Twitter today, we have 125,000 orders. So <laughs> if you do the math. Quite, I wish, I wish. 
Yeah. Um, so we do the <laughs> math. math guy. The one percent Excel guy pulled out. You know, he he quickly yeah. figured out the numbers. Um, you know, the guys that will be like, I ordered this month, and then I ordered again a month later, and I saw the order numbers, and now I know how many products they're selling. Yeah. I had a guy like that once, and I was like, sir. You honestly have to find a, a day job. Like you, you can't be doing this. Like this is, this is ridiculous. It's also like yeah, you know people can like, randomize numbers, and and yeah, then what? Like, how, how like you have no idea what their react. AOV. Yeah. He's like, well, I ordered X, Y, and Z, so I imagine their AOV is. And I was like, you just made nine assumptions, and based on like the order number, you're convinced you have their entire annuals, uh, all the numbers figured out, which is yeah. a lot of detectives, yeah, so you... a lot of sleuths <laughs> on D to C Twitter. So yeah, so you can do. Um... Those are kind of most of them. Let me think if there's a few others. Um, so yeah, in-card upsells, in-checkout upsells. Again, you can do post-purchase if you decide to. Totally fine. You can get some nice increases there. Um, what else can you do? Free shipping thresholds is, is also one. We tested quite a bit. I think that's another one where you shouldn't just make assumptions. Um, I thought We have a pretty high one, but we tested it, right? Yeah, yeah, we tested it. And uh, I, I'd actually be curious to test it again, see you know how it shakes up any differently. We used Ship Scout. I know people use Ship Scout or Intelligems. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. And again, you can look at you know revenue per session, but you can also look at uh, contribution margin per session. And you know because if you're offering free shipping, that's you know five dollars you're not getting from them. Does does increasing the AOV make it worthwhile? Right. right. Um, because it's, that, that's I think that's also the question to think about is like if you're if you're offering a hundred dollar minimum free free shipping threshold, like how many like is it de- is it decreasing your conversion, um, mm-hmm. which is obviously like your increase in AOV is is, is yeah. accounting for a lot of fun stuff, but you're leaving a million dollars on the table, right? So it's like yeah, it's you want you, you want revenue per session, but you really want margin per session is really what you're looking at, which would be like a step further. And it's it's harder to track. Like revenue per session is so easy. Like any split testing software you use, whatever it is, can can track that. But you really want margin per session because you could increase Big your margin, revenue. guys. Yeah, you can increase your revenue per session and, and decrease that theoretically in some cases. Hmm. Um, any? What else? Are there any? There's got to be something else that we can do to improve AOV. I mean, the obviously we tackled this like post purchase upsells. Yeah. Um, your fave, my favorite. And then I'm trying to think, we we must have missed something. So if you yeah, if you're like, good. oh, these dumbasses, they missed blah blah blah. Just please don't quote. Please don't like subtweet us. Just just at us and be like, hey, you were talking about upsells. You forgot my app just that helps us. people upsell a million dollars a month. Yeah. Um, and you guys should totally check it out. And here's the demo. In this episode, we're talking a ton about increasing AOV. And one of the ways that brands increase AOV is with a mobile app from Tapcart. To actually convert shoppers, brands need a seamless UX experience and a mobile first mindset. 47% of people expect your page to load in two seconds. 40% of users will bounce if your page doesn't load in three. You lose 7% of conversions for every second your page load lags. A mobile app has a better customer experience, which leads to higher AOV and more brand loyalty. With features like instant page loading, one-click checkout, saved account info, native integrations, and push notifications, shoppers spend more time on the app, add more to their cart, and actually check out. With Tapcart, you can instantly turn your Shopify store into an epic mobile app with no coding required and a power, a low upkeep revenue stream designed to convert mobile shoppers relevant case studies reason clothing launched an app for bfcm with Tapcart. the results 120 dollars higher aov in app for desktop plus mobile web seven and a half times higher orders per session 42 percent increase in black friday cyber monday revenue and 2.4 times more orders in app versus desktop and mobile app art of t tripled their conversion rate with a mobile app 4.6 times higher or average order value per session than mobile web. Here's what you can expect on average with a tap cart mobile app metrics wise, a 40% increase on average in conversion rate versus website, a 2.4 times increase in LTV on the app and a 2.2 times revenue per session on app. If you want to check out tap cart, you can go to tapcart.com forward slash down to chat tapcart.com forward slash down to chat here's another here's another test i want to run so you know how i was talking about the like the three offers on a pdp i also love that on landing pages um very again very common in supplements magic spoon runs that uh athletic greens does it um really well so i want to test that my thought is i want to test that for miracle bomb Hmm. i don't think i want to offer two miracle bombs but i think i want to do like miracle bomb 
the middle one having be the 101 set, which is like our starter set that has a miracle bomb and then other things. And then I'd have to figure out like what the third one would be. Maybe that would just be a decoy of like miracle bomb in like six different shades. <laughs> I don't, I don't actually know what it'd be. Um, but I think if we can think of something like that, then we can get people to the miracle bomb landing page and whatnot. Cause when we run ads for the one one set, it, it doesn't quite spend as well and, and have the same appeal, but then we can get the AOV up by doing it that way. I think the whole decoy and anchoring is all super fascinating. Um, mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. book I read a while back called Never Split the Difference, which is um, his like former FBI Is that Chris Voss? I yeah, love exactly. Have you watched his masterclass? I have not. I'm too cheap for a masterclass. When I, oh, I'll hook you up with my login. When, when we had the service business, that was like the, the foundation of like a lot of the sales stuff that we did and taught. He's, he's excellent. It's, yeah. I mean, I read his book and I was stuff. like, this is, this is genius. And so much of it is, is, is the anchoring piece, right? It's like, if you come in on the site and the first seven products you see are over a hundred bucks and then you see some cheaper ones, you're like, oh, that's really reasonable. Right. Um, you that's know, really reasonable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just mirrored you. Yeah, I don't know exactly. Yeah. 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 No, he, yeah. he has, he has these few things. So like one is mirroring, which is like you, you repeat like the last few words that somebody says. So mm -hmm. if you were, if you were to be like, I don't know, say something. Uh, influenced by Robert Cialdini is a great book. It's a great book. And you kind of do it with like an inflection yeah. like that. If people don't yeah. know it, like they'll just go on and continue to talk and you can literally just say nothing back. Like I used to do this in sales and they'll just continue to go on all the time. And then labeling, um, especially mm -hmm. like if you want people to open up labeling is like, you kind of tell them like it, how they feel a little bit. So if they're, if they're like really upset, you're like, it sounds like you're upset. And they'll be like, yeah, I am. And like, there's like a positive affinity towards that. Like if you can kind of help them like, with their emotions and like help them like uh verbalize it a little bit like there's data that like this is one reason why therapy works like there's data that like based on mris like when people say how they feel the activation in those like negative centers of the brain actually decreases when people say it out loud so it's just like another like cool like sales tactic that he that he uses i i love all of this because i love that i love any any kind of sales that takes real human behavioral psychology versus like the the sketchy urgency sleazy mm -hmm. stuff like i absolutely love i mean all of this is like you know mm -hmm. the godfather of, of a lot of this is 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 cialdini with with yeah. with uh with the influence book and influence. it's like reciprocity commitment consistency totally. authority scarcity sympathy social proof like all those things that we kind of like brought into marketing um yeah, and then absolutely. into negotiation and all that is is if you haven't if you haven't read those two books, um, never split the difference and in influence. I, I think those are two two of the books that that we both um, big fan. How do we get on that? I know I just about. I got on a little tangent there because I love his book and his stuff. But how do how do how we get we, on that? How did we get on that? I honestly only God knows. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> so we're both on a good four or five. I'd say like seven hours of sleep over the last three days. So like combined. We're both yeah, we're both thriving, but how do we get there? I'm not quite sure. Um, what I think that I mean, I honestly think that's it for this week. I'm Did fine we, with that. We we got a lot of Black Friday prepping to do. So yeah, yeah, I think we we covered it all. But well, um, so things we have to keep the folks updated on uh, the landing pages when you get more data, the, the direct mail, which is like we're at the very last minute here, final stretch, doing final. Touches. I think I got, I got um, tagged in something in Figma, so I got to check that out. Cody's got to prove it and then it's going out within the next couple of days. Um, and now the in card upsells, um, all the, all the upsells will, will keep you all posted on it until next time. See you then. Cheers. <laughs>